Good Monday morning, everybody. Welcome. This is Lore Forest, episode 59. We are back from the Smoky Mountains, and we are so stoked to have you here with us. My name is Jibs, and I'm joined by Cash. Hey, everybody. It's nice to be here. We uh, are very excited to be back. Uh, it was very difficult for us to not record a show last week, but we were probably in the Smoky Mountains drinking. <laughs> Dude, I'm on a detox. Like, I'm not drinking. Truth. For, for it, It's our 15th Truth. wedding anniversary day. I'm like, hey, do you want to drink? And by the end of the night, I'm just like, nope. No, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. Wait, <laughs> it's your wedding anniversary. How about a hell yeah for that, Sonny? Ready, go. Hell Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank 15. you. Congratulations. Yes, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Believe it or not, and nice I'm not work. trying to I'm not trying to big D you here, but oh, this uh, is next a one up year. incoming right here. One up incoming. Yeah. Go ahead, I pretty know, much. It's like, it's you, like you want me the, to spread uh, my legs so you can kick both mm -hmm. of my balls when you do this? Um, I don't want you to do the first thing you said, but the second <laughs> thing you said, yeah, I want to do that. Okay. Um, no, next year is gonna be my twenty fifth. Oh, that's 25th. awesome. Yeah, okay. me and the Malster. 25th yeah, we'll awesome. save the hell yeah for next year well i mean i mean yeah. when you started when you were 14 like it's Thanks, guys. early <laughs> yeah it was you an arranged married marriage in kentucky though so i mean there was that <laughs> yeah it, it was an arranged your marriage by my italian father <laughs> to my half cousin molly yeah. <laughs> uh, that's oh awesome oh. you have unified the families forever mm. it's fantastic uh anyway yeah. sunny's here you know, I would have thought the Smoky Mountains would have been smokier. That John Denver is, uh, mm. he's full of it. We drove uh, a lot. We, uh, quite a bit. Uh, the downside of the Smoky Mountains is if you're buried inside of 40 foot trees that are as thick as you could possibly stack them together, you don't get much of a view of the mountains, it turns out. You don't, that but was, you uh, get, that was you our get a view of trees. Is you do. What you, get a view of. you are buried in the woods, which is cool. Um, but, uh, we were actually pretty high up and you didn't see the mountains until you left on the world's windiest and narrowest road that was straight up. <laughs> so there was that. It was. And for those of you that don't know, um, we, we've had, we've have a core group of friends, um, on, in our discord that have, you know, followed us through a bunch of shows that we've done Any in the past. Years. And these are, you know, these are friends, you know, going on. 12 13 years now and uh we had this trip planned for it, the better part of two years we've had this trip planned so there was there was 15 of us and we all went to um to the smoky mountains in tennessee we're glad we made it which uh and we had an, an amazing time we were very glad we made it the road that we actually needed to take in because of hurricane helene uh the road had just been opened that morning oh. and we we had some friends coming up from Florida and, and some from different all kinds of places in the United States. We actually had somebody uh, coming from British Columbia as well uh, that had some difficulty getting there, but they were everybody was able to get together, which was which was fantastic. And it was just such a great representation of what our community is and can be for folks who, you know, I, I don't want to say commit, but just, you know, kind of buy into what we're doing. Like we're building a family first. Um and then here's the other thing. I do want to give from all of us here at Laura Forge, uh, we want to give our love and support to um, our two friends from the Golden Feather, uh, Chibi and Vertec. They um, they were affected by um, the um, hurricane clean. And and now, I mean, they're fine, but um, it was just uh, they're fine again. But uh, it's just a, a terrible thing. That happened uh, over there, and um, it's fixing to happen again. Unfortunately, hopefully, it, this uh, next one, Milton, kind of cools down a little bit, and it doesn't hit the coast with the fervor they think it's going to. So, anyway, much love to them, and anybody who's going to be affected. I know um, our very own Katie gone crazy back soon, and her husband uh, had to evacuate because uh, they're they're in Orlando, which is like right in the path. So, yeah. anyway, if you're out there, please be safe. Get out of there for for one and um yeah we just wish everybody there the best agreed agreed yeah so we had a good time on that trip uh things happened a formidable amount of alcohol and cigars were 
partaken? Partook? I don't know. It was good? It's neither of those. Uh, <laughs> That's a red flag there. <laughs> uh, I only had one cigar. Uh, I thought I did pretty pretty well on that front. I uh, had several. <laughs> <laughs> I did yes, light a lot did. of campfires. I really enjoyed that. Um, that was fun to watch. Was, uh, it was just a lot of fun to, you know, just to be around and everything like that. Um, uh, Pigeon Forge, by the way. Turns out Pigeon Forge is Branson, Missouri. <laughs> did not yeah. did not see that coming. And for those who don't uh, know what that is, Sonny, why don't you give them a little clarification as to what that means? I don't know Disney how World. to explain Pigeon Forge other than, like, I guess, for people that had been there, like, 20, 30 years ago, uh, it was sort of a, a, a smoky little mountain town. And now it is, like, a family friendly Walmart Vegas. <laughs> I guess that's what I would describe it as. I'm glad you said Vegas because oh, the yeah. one thing it reminds me of, if you were to take Circus Circus from Vegas and then just drop a massive one right and over the top like, of Pigeon Forge. Shake it out on top of Pigeon Forge. <laughs> that's what it looks like. like there's there's like actual structures that are built so they look like they're upside down and there's freaking helicopters cut like full helicopters. Yeah. I mean full grown adult helicopters coming out of buildings. It's like Whoa, this yeah. place is a little bit over the top. Yeah, there was so. a formidable amount of helicopter tours going on. Like, we were sitting there with... Uh, oh, around the mountains? Yeah. Around the mountains? Oh, yeah. yeah, I was sitting oh, there yeah. with beta rays, and I think it was Tark, and we were just we heard this, one of them, literally their engine wind down while they were flying, and we're like, okay. We're just yeah, well, that kicks back on. Yeah. That's not how helicopters are supposed to work. No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, the funny thing about helicopters, and don't worry, folks, we're going to talk ashes here soon. The funny thing about helicopters is they are fighting gravity the entire time. And obviously everything is, but that is a craft that is not <laughs> supposed to be in the air. But somehow they figured out how to keep them airborne. So not very much margin for error there. Do you think planes defy gravity? <laughs> like, <laughs> planes have something called lift that... You just got to get speed and it causes that lift. Helicopters have to work for it this is every true. second. We're not going to get too much into helicopters, but when a helicopter is moving forward, it does act like a plane because of the, the angle of the rotors and everything like that. Big fan of helicopters yes. here. Cash gets to ride them way more than I get to. But uh, yeah, there's there's no doubt that if something is going to crash and it's a small plane that I'm in or it's a helicopter, I'll take I'll take the plane. <laughs> yeah, I Hel take the plane. Too. Helicopter going down. <laughs> I'm I'm happy with just my feet on the ground. You know, I, they can just they can just stay there, and I can just watch. That's fine too. Keep your feet on the ground. Keep your feet on. Yes. Speaking of, truly a dwarf. Truly yeah. a dwarf. That's right. Dig deep, but not too deep. Hashtag Balrog. <laughs> um. Oh my gosh, a piece of dust just went up my nose mid-speech okay sorry uh well hey everybody thank you so much again for tuning in hanging out with us we are doing this live over at twitch you can always come watch the show twitch.tv forward slash what are we loreforged hq yeah it's loreforged hq right sure all right so anyway you can come check us out there and uh for everyone who is here welcome in we appreciate you to uh thank you so much for being here with us and uh, for everyone who's watching, whether you're on Spotify, YouTube, or you're listening on some kind of other podcast app, welcome in, friends. Gentlemen, we have a large, well, I wouldn't say large, but it's a formidable dev update we got to go through tonight, today. That's the second formidable out of you today. Well, you're getting uh, <laughs> twice the fun. Twice, he's, twice the fun. He's, he's a very <laughs> intrepid <laughs> podcast host. Ooh. Hey. I don't know if you, what's that word that they used in the dev update we were just talking about cash beforehand that we didn't think was a word. Uh, that word you, is you, fatui. Fatui? <laughs> yeah, does anybody know what the hell fatui what? is? <laughs> I want some context. I feel like we need to see, like, does he, he doesn't spell it, obviously, does he? Uh, no, he doesn't spell it. He, I, he doesn't even it? really pronounce it very well because I was like, <laughs> rewind, like hitting the, the back thing on YouTube a couple times going, what? <laughs> In the hell is a fatui? I tried spelling it. I tried asking Chat GPT. When you can get Chat GPT oh, to look tell at this. you to look at Hevel Dust. Look at Hevel Dust. First time user experience. F T U E. Fatui. Thank is you. that Let true me... or are you making that up? Because either way, I believe you. Procti says. <laughs> it's I totally the believe that. Procti says it's the cousin of the Hoktua. 
Oh, no. I don't know if it's that, but thank you. Um, Yellow. So, it, Flag so yourself, in my please, search, Brock here's, here's how I spelt it. F-I-T-U-O-Y, F-I-T-O-U-Y. And, and I found out that you actually can get chat, TB, chat GPT to tell you to F off. Oh. They're like, you're screwing with me. So is that what happened to me? Is that like something they made up or is this are like I feel like out of these dev updates every once in a while you get these random words you've never heard, but you don't get them like a single use. It's like nothing. Everything's fine. Normal English that everyone understands. And all of a sudden you've got the what was uh, not bespoke, but then you've got other stuff. You've got the Fatua. Bespoke is a good one. Fatui. Yep. Thank you. I I get the feeling that that, uh, in the game development world that they just sort of it's like the military, right? Like if you were in the military for 20 years, there are words that nobody outside the military would ever use. And they use them all the time in there. And they have little acronyms and everybody knows what they mean. And well, yeah, that one got out. (laughs) Oh, yeah, it got out. We know that one. What's Um, Fubar? Remind me. Oh, no. (laughs) <laughs> I got him. I got you. I got you, Sonny. Just okay. Re- I got this. <laughs> f up beyond all recognition, Jordan. Okay, thank you. Wow. You're welcome. There all you right. go. Operational security. There's, if thank I you. Google oh, sorry. Batui, <laughs> it sure does say first time user experience. Yeah. I that's, love it. That's oh. exactly it. Okay. Look at that. And all right. Hevel works for the Navy. Their alphabet soup is Hevel's second language. So there See, you go. Thank you very much, uh, somebody in the know. Hevel works for the Navy. See, it's all coming full circle. It's like we know yes. what we're doing here. Yeah. Almost. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> oh, uh, all right. Well, to everyone who is listening again, thanks for tuning in. Uh, before we get started, we have a roadmap we put out for the Alpha 2. A lot of people are asking. Well, there it's there. I guess, should we put it on our Twitter too? Maybe, I don't know. But anyway, it's all on our community yeah. Discord. Uh, yeah. yeah. Cash, I know you wanted to talk about it. So that was your, that was your no, lead. Yeah, well, That's where you take it. I just wanted to mention it. I think, I think it's, um, it's something that our community wanted um, and kind of in the style of obviously not as detailed as Ash's um, roadmap for, alpha, for the alpha phases. But um, we put... A, a graphic out and jibs just did an amazing job on putting it on putting it together but Thank you. it kind of details out what our guild focus is going to be during the alpha phases and then what each of our branches focus is going to foci oh foci. i mean nice work foci what our branches foci will be during the alpha two yes so he Thank gets you. a pass on that so, and when i say a word it doesn't exist sonny <laughs> First of all, that word does exist. <laughs> it's, and that's it's, why he got a pass. <laughs> it's folk art. See? <laughs> okay. I bonded. Sonny and I bonded on this trip. I, I, I'm just going to say that. Like, we already obviously had a pretty close bond, but um, we, we literally bonded, didn't we, Sonny? I gave you I a neck like hug. I don't like where this is going. I gave I, you a neck hug. I got my neck did. hug in. Got a neck and hug on the in. last day of the trip, friends, the last day of the trip, we took a picture with the entire group and I got my hips in hug and he didn't even budge. Couldn't, couldn't avoid it. <laughs> took it like a champ. Too tired, too tired to run. Oh, uh, it was I great. guess you I'll couldn't just run. die. You were in my grasp, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good time. Oh, so yeah, the Alpha 2 is coming. It's going to be exciting times for the guild. Um, like you said, already said, Cash, it's out. It has stuff on there for our guilds and then per branch focus. And yeah, it's going to be a good time. So, uh, but yeah, so this week on the show, we're doing a review of the latest dev update on the Lion Hold. And I got to say, guys, as we kind of get started here with that, that was pretty impressive. What'd you guys think? Oof. Well, first of all, the the graphics of that bridge with the lions literally holding the bridge, uh, that was that was pretty spectacular. Um, I love stuff like that. That was one of my favorite moments of Lord of the Rings when they're going down the river. And I'm sure that our death is in the chat just about to bust out with all of the accurate <laughs> like landmarks to that thing yeah, in See, there it is already yeah i didn't even have to say anything he's like the the argonath basically the big dudes that are given the the uh the flat palm ah uh, yeah <laughs> yeah 
Yeah. Uh, if, if you you ever, talk if to you the ever, hand. They are two large talk to the hand dudes. <laughs> if you ever want to, if you ever want to curtail all of the uh, massive, massive amounts of lore that come out of our friend Ardeth in regards to Lord of the Rings, tell him to explain it to you in Elvish. Take that, pal. It's, I feel like I don't want to fo- call down that thunder. <laughs> that seems it's dangerous. some form of Elvish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Anyways, uh, it reminded me very much of that. Uh, I, I felt like the I I felt like that was just a very cool place to start because you get. Oh, how can I explain this? So when I went to Disney World, um, I went to Harry Potter World. Big Harry Potter fan. Love Harry Potter. And uh, Disney does this better than anybody. They let you see what they want you to see and only when they want you to see it. Uh, and it's through design. And so you go in, uh, you're in the park and you're, you know, you're wandering around and there's all sorts of other crap. Right. And then you get to Harry Potter world and you can't really see anything. Um, and you go into this brick building that has like an archway. And, and it funnels you. As soon as you get in, you go either right or left. It doesn't matter. And you and then you take another left and you come back. And so you basically go like 10 feet further, but you have to go all the way around inside this brick thing to get there. And when you walk out of that, then you are in Diagon Alley. And it is spectacular. It's like the buildings are three stories tall. There's a gigantic dragon at the end of the alley and it's breathing fire and it is just spectacular. And the, the point is that... There is something magical about when you are in a place and you don't know what's outside the door and you come out of the door and the sun is shining and everything is great and you see something enormously just just gigantic and spectacular. And that's the way that I felt when you were you start with the portal. It's cool. You're in this sort of like enclosed building and you come out and you see the bridge and you're like, Damn, <laughs> that is cool. That's a huge bridge. And that is exactly it. <laughs> that was the feeling that I had. And, and that is uh, that is just, you know, that is just good design. It is it is really cool to see that kind of visual experience land like that, because a lot of people can make a game and a lot of people can put in cool graphics. But doing something like that is design. I'm going to tack on to that because I, I, although the Harry Potter, you kind of lost me there, but I, I, um, I attributed that to coming around the corner for the first time in Galaxy's Edge and seeing the Millennium Falcon. And I had like a, a full adult grown ass man breakdown, like right there. <laughs> it's right there. That was amazing. But uh, I agree with you on, on that entire thing and seeing how big everything was it brought to my attention the attention to detail that intrepid is putting into scale and we can't forget what that location was like that was the alien capital so when you think of how vera was before the fall it was everything was massive like that was the center of trade the center of uh education commerce everything was ayla was this massive massive city and it has it's fallen into ruin so when you yeah when you finally come out of there like they're in the ruins of this massive building and they come out of the ruins after a pretty sad attempt at uh, at jumping puzzles but i can't <laughs> i can't give anybody a hard time because i'm not that good at them either um, but you finally like come out of that. They have to kill a few, uh, goblins and stuff as part of a quest. And they come out of that initial portal area and you just see the grand scale of Lionhold. And it's, it's very, very impressive. So, uh, and that's exactly what I thought as well. And if they're, obviously they're showing us, you're starting in a, in a major area that they have finished and polished a lot of the stuff and and even margaret said it like they're continuing to put polish on that stuff because they want us to play through as we're finding bugs and such in alpha they they want us to see what this game and this engine and this team is capable of so that is the one thing that comes to my mind in stepping out there and seeing that bridge is scale the other thing that comes to my mind is 
a Black Talon Trading Company guild event called Lawn Darts. Yes! Off that bridge. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Doing it. <laughs> you think you're going to be able to get up onto that bridge? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they said, yeah. They yep. uh, they said you're able to get on that bridge. It's it's a long way, but they said there is um, there's a way to get up there. So that's what I picture. And even Steven mentioned, how many people do you think we're going to see falling off this bridge? And I'm like, hmm. Well, if you're on our server, guild, a 300. Lot. Yeah, all <laughs> 300 in a row. Bam, 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 bam. We have this game that, that we've played in uh, in past MMOs called uh, Lawn Darts. And it's basically we pick a target on the ground level and then everybody lines up and whoever gets closest to that target upon their death <laughs> receives the receives prizes. So it's, it's kind of cool. And I think we're going to we're going to give that bridge a go. For sure. Absolutely. What'd you guys think of the uh, first off? I mean, you talk about that entry point when you first come in and we got our, well, for our first view, I feel like I'm sure there was stuff in Alpha 1, etc. But we weren't there for that, so that doesn't count. But <laughs> what'd you guys think of seeing the portal in game? Like as soon as he turns around, just that massive portal. Good design. Uh, I liked it. Uh, I thought it was good. I thought it was, I mean, it's a little stargate -y. <laughs> right <laughs> it was kind of stargatey for me um but it's a portal right like what's it supposed to look like so uh i i i thought it was cool that he turned around and saw the portal that was the first kind of wow moment because that's the mm. first thing i would have done too right you walk through the thing you're like cool <laughs> whoa <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> like that is exactly what i'm going to do <laughs> there's just no doubt whatsoever yeah um yeah cash i don't know i mean did the portal strike you as anything pretty cool it was the first cool thing i saw in the video right and when they step out and they turn around and you're like wow that's kind of cool yeah it, it particularly struck me as amazing because i've spent the better part of a year making videos based off of uh off of ai that i, I just wasn't quite sure of what the portals look like and now we know. And there's there's been concept art and such that show what they look like. But to see one actually rendered in game and then knowing like on the other side of this is Sanctus. Like, can we yeah. can we get back there at some point? I, I bet doubt that's it. an expansion. Oh, man, that would be crazy. But I mean, it'd be a boring expansion because there's no magic yeah. on Sanctus unless something magically happens like in New World when they originally said that that there's no there's no mounts because they for some lore reason and now magically poof there's mounts <laughs> <laughs> things can so, happen i will say know. like there there is something about portals like i remember in warcraft like how excited i was to go see where the portal was even when the portal oh, like, yeah. wasn't working right. i wanted to be like well where'd they come from it was like oh there's a place that you can see where they came from um so there's always something special about that and then just you got to think that the artist's decision on how to make that look is a pretty big deal because people are going to people are going to seek that out. Um, that is that is on the short list of things that people will go find if it's not something you obviously start right out of. Um, they will want to find uh, that portal. And so it, it looks cool. It looks very cool. Um, I think Agron mentioned the lighting on it. Yeah, the lighting oh, yeah. was really good. Yeah. That was um, good. Really, really good. So that was cool. But uh, there's another thing, JB. Mm. It is uh, an, another graphical cool thing that also connected a hell of a lot of points for us, for lore nerds. And that was when you saw this giant tree. <laughs> Would you like to talk a little bit about the heart tree? Yeah. So that was a Heartwood. dead. Uh, Heartwood. I'm, I apologize. It's okay. I was going to correct Wood. you. I wasn't lore free. faux pas. Heart, heartwood tree. i got you heartwood, i got heartwood you tree. yep okay heartwood yep so that was a dead heartwood and i thought that was, there was so many lore drops in this dev update and we're definitely gonna name them all but one of them was the heartwood and so these trees tap into the essence and form a network throughout vera they were a gift of the goddess of creation and fun fact will be affected by your nodes progression now how it's affected you know that that's kind of up for mystery but Man, oh man, was that cool to see? Because uh, that was the first time I think we've ever seen those. I don't think we've even heard of them. And then to find out that that, I mean, Cash, you tell me, but when you get an explanation like that, it makes it feel to me like 
that is how the essence exists in the whole planet. <laughs> it's basically a network of these trees. So that seems pretty important for us to never have heard of it before now. Yeah, super important. And and to be able to see it is definitely a Fatui. I just thought I'd throw that out there real quick. Oh, good. good. Um, <laughs> it was a Fatui. When, it, it when in a, Rome. When in Rome. Still, uh, don't Go worry, it'll come, it'll come to you. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, uh, I, I love... I love the fact that there is some type of a, um, like a, a, what do you call that? Like a, um, a line system in the game where all those things are connected. Ley line? Via roots. Ley line. Thank you very much. That's exactly what I was thinking of. Um, there's a ley line system where the flow of the essence is traveling all the time. And then you can see that that tree obviously wasn't doing very well. And it was, it was even mentioned in, in the showcase that it wasn't doing very well, most likely as a result of what happened to the Aelin capital. Um, so to me, that has something to do with corruption. And it's, it's just this constant back and forth of the essence and then the corrupted side of the essence. Mm -hmm. So it's probably what happened to that tree, but... I am dying to see what a what a strong one looks like in the game. I think that's going to be amazing. And I wonder if that's if there are heartwood trees spread throughout the world that are uh, places of interest that you can travel to. And then I wonder as well, since it's fed by the node, if the node is doing very well, I wonder if that heartwood tree maybe changes its appearance. I want to know if they come to life like treants and like in Lord of the Rings. How cool would that be to have Vera's own version of tree ants? I mean, that one was flying. It was just kind of floating. Oh, it was floating? To, like, it was, yeah, it was on like, wasn't it? It was uh, It was on a big rock that looked like it was in the sky. Maybe it was. Um, I missed that yeah. part. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back and look at it, but I, Pretty, I definitely know there Jack, was a waterfall. Can you, fact, can, you, can you fact check me that that was like just a floating rock and thing in the sky? There or definitely was a waterfall in the sky, which was pretty damn cool. Yeah, that was cool. Hey, speaking um, of... if I can find it in the video. Speaking of some yeah. graphical stuff, what would you guys think of those quest givers? The, they had a shimmer over the top of them. I didn't know what that was at first, and turns out, at least right now, that's how you can tell that that is your uh, quest givers in the game. They kind of have this <laughs> rotating I mean, shimmer. All I could think of is like, huh... Somebody solved the giant exclamation point problem. <laughs> <laughs> like, this guy yeah. should work for NASA. <laughs> he's, he's, got, he's got like a glowing tray of cookies and you know that you know he's got a quest for you. Can I take a cookie if I take a quest? I feel like that was an intern. Uh, oh, go ahead. Confirmed. The tree does appear to be coming out of the ground, not a suspended rock. Oh, so the rocks yes. with the waterfalls were floating and stuff like that. The tree wasn't necessarily on one of those. Right. Mm. You know You know what it does remind me, though, with the whole magic ley line tree, thing? slightly less magical. <laughs> Although, well, this one is, this one's near dead. But um, it's dead what was sight. that movie? What was the movie with all the, with the blue aliens that were, they could like ride on these things. Like the Navi? Avatar? Uh, Navi, exactly. Yeah, um, What's the name of the, the movie series? Uh, uh, duh, duh. Exactly. Duh. Where aliens. What That's is it? I'm... It's not Aliens. In the I guess day. you haven't seen it, Jordan. They're going to no, tell us. No, it's the James Cameron movie. Operational Security. We're doing Avatar, thank you. The chat Avatar. helped me out. It was Avatar. I said thank Avatar. You. Did you? Gosh. Hello? Oh, you must, you must have mumbled it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that, that's, that's what it reminds me of. How you have this life just like flowing through the roots of trees and everywhere and, pe and people can connect to it and stuff. And and I love that. And don't forget the Veloon. And this is kind of interesting, right? Because when everybody comes through the portal, they made it seem like everybody has something that they carry that might be like racially... Um, connected to your character in some way when you come through the portal. I don't know if it's like papers or something like a medallion they were talking about. But anyway, don't forget with the, with the Veiloon, the Veiloon have a very special connection to the essence where when they come through the portal, 
at certain points you can see like cracks in their skin with like a glow. Yeah. Mm. Which is kind of cool. And, and it's it's very, you know, it's very racially. Um, <laughs> where am I going with this? It's very racially confined to just that race, which I think is is a really neat little feature. All, that they're all I can think races. of when you're trying to describe this this very important like racial connection to coming through the portal is you, an Italian, coming through the portal with like a stromboli. It's <laughs> <laughs> so like, hey! It's <laughs> me! Would you, would you like some stromboli? <laughs> <laughs> I brought a cousin for everybody on the everybody. battle. It's a cousin! Who wants a cousin? Oh. <laughs> Mikey's here! Hey! <laughs> 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 they make Baron Chef jokes all the time. Uh, all right, so th- apparently this is a big thing. I don't know if it was going around the community or what. There was all kinds of videos about AI and all this sort of stuff. But we got to see AI gentlemen in action in Ashes with voiceover for these Ooh. quest givers. I'm going to open that can. Yeah. You guys just yeah, take it's, it where you it's want. A good yeah. can, it's a good can to open that we could... We could sink an entire show into it. talking about the AI. Um, I think that um, where they're headed is a very good place. And, and Steven even mentioned it, like they're using the voices of the people who are building the game, which I think is absolutely incredible for them to do. Um, he d- also did say that they're working on some of the different voice inflections and stuff so that so that it sounds a little more natural because there were certain spots where it wasn't natural and you could see where like the text was put in for it to maybe be a dwarf talking but what was coming out was you know when i was a child me pa as opposed to <laughs> I, me pa. when i was a child me pa you know like that kind of thing it, it, you know those different um <laughs> Those different voice iterations. That was that, his name. Were, it was Meepaw. <laughs> Meepaw. Just like in, Mimi. Just Pawpaw. like Meemaw. But you can tell that, uh, that, the, that the text is in place, but they haven't quite gotten the voice inflections correct. But if that's how the game launches and it's like that, I'm totally willing to listen to it and be like, yep, they'll fix this in time. Because I am so excited that there is some voice acting in the game. I think oh, that is fantastic. Boy. Yeah. Um, man, JB, I mean, you you can speak to this, but like the difference between a game that we've played with voice acting and a game where you don't have any voice acting in, in the MMO, in the MMO education and history that you have had playing many, 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 many MMOs, how important on a scale of one to 10 is having actual voice acting in an MMO. I didn't realize how much I loved it until I had it. And when I had it, and even when I was playing classic era World of Warcraft and someone made it this add-on for this exact thing, I went mm-hmm. back. That's when it hit me. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. <laughs> and it just brings a, a deeper level of immersion into the game. And... I, Cash and I were in the private chat channel when you were streaming, Sonny, and we were screaming. We hopped in your your channel while you were streaming. We're screaming. You know, like, I was just through the moon excited for this. And even in its infant state with the AI. Through the moon? It, through the moon? Through the moon. Through the moon. What did I say? Yeah, it's an interesting <laughs> path, but that's fine. <laughs> oh, through the moon or over the moon? Yeah. So Midwest, we go. do that here. Oh, over the moon. <laughs> You'll hear that a lot when you get out of the state that's falling off the planet. So, long story short. Right. <laughs> long story short, I just loved it, man. I really did. And it's really, I didn't realize how important it was to me until I've had it. You know, I had a taste of the glory and it was good. Yeah. Oh. I loved it. I mean, it was it, it was important, and, and I'd be willing to accept even uh, some games do this where you get, like for example, I'm playing Tropico right now just for fun while I'm killing time before this whole thing launches, and Tropico does a thing where they have the the character voice the first couple lines of the whole piece of text. They don't voice the whole thing, right? They they just do the first line or two, and then you can read the rest if you want. 
but it still makes an enormous difference in you uh, understanding and 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 getting into the mindset of that character. And Tropico is a sort of a fun, cartoony sort of game. But if you're going to do that with an MMO, even if you have them say the first little bit, like, oh, my kid, you know, he went out to do this and he fell down the well. And then there's more detail. I would even accept that. Um, it'd be nice if they did the whole thing. But, you know, sometimes the, there's a lot of information. And, and the reason why they're doing this is undoubtedly to save money and probably, like, space i maybe like doing it with an ai is uh is easier on space but it's definitely definitely less labor intensive than having uh actors and actresses come in and then if you want to change something you just change it and that's it you want to add something you just add it and that's it you don't have to bring cat Tabor back into the studio you don't have to do anything like that and so i get it the can of worms cash is that you're not paying people like Cat Tabor. <laughs> Cat Tabor doesn't get a job out of this, right? Yeah, for sure. And 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 I agree there. And uh, the one the one thing that I did want to say too is uh, you know, to your Tropico uh, point, another game that's like that was is Lord of the Rings Online. And Lord of the Rings Online does like that, they say the first line. And every single time I'm like, don't stop, just keep talking. I'm loving this, my immersion. <laughs> and then they stop. I'm like, no, oh, no, I gotta read. Which is fine, but and I would be totally happy with that too, but more is always better. And obviously it's, it's just, it's more labor intensive to do that, even if they're using AI, but it does beg the question and, you know, maybe we can touch on it because it's this, it's a huge topic. Is using AI in video games too much? Does it take too much away from the folks who do it professionally and are, and are paid and, and, their livelihood is based upon it. I guess the 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 initial thing that I will say is this. There is no game in the history of gaming. Maybe for from now until a hundred years from now that will cost as much as making an MMO. It is so far and away the most expensive undertaking that any studio will ever go into that I think that you you just have to have cost saving measures wherever you can get them. Um, and, and this is one of those things. But man, we're talking like like a triple A studio that comes out with a Star Wars game. That is a big deal. But a studio that comes out with an MMO, you are on the ballpark of half a billion dollars to make a game like this. Like it is it is just it is hard to wrap your brain around. And so the time and the the difficulty in doing all this stuff, if you're telling me that there's a way that I can get that next level of immersion and have the game actually not file bankruptcy, like I will take it <laughs> because it is hard. The voice actors, like I get it. They are, they're hard up for work. It's a tough gig. Any gig economy in the gaming industry is tough. Anything in the gaming industry at all is tough and your job can just float away. So I get that and I know that people are worried that AI is ruining art and music and acting and all of this stuff and they're right, okay? They are right, but this is just one of those things that like I'm gonna have to give them a pass on this thing because it is just so difficult to make this game and look around, there's nobody else doing it anymore. There's nobody else making games like this. This could be the last great hope for us. And and so I I will I will give them a big pass on making decisions like this. I like it. I, and I like that take. And Jibs, I want to get your take here in a second on this too. But I, I do think there is there is room for compromise. And Adgron kind of uh, leads to it a little bit with the comment of I think some big characters need to have voice acting, but not all. So the thought is there, say we have major cutscenes in the game, if they're even going to be in the game, we don't know. But something like that, where you have like you have a cutscene attached to a story arc or even at the very beginning of the game where it's leading you into it. And there's just just this big, beautiful cutscene as, as we know that they would probably create. Those should be voice acted. Major plot points and such, I think, would be really cool to have the voice acted. But Sonny, or uh, Jibs, what are your thoughts on this? Um, 
I think it makes sense for the studio to definitely be utilizing AI right now in a pre-launch state. Um, I, I once heard a developer, and I don't remember what develop. This may have been somebody in either New World or Elder Scrolls Online, but it's kind of like a general consensus, I believe. Um, MMOs are a bunch of very of many. There are many video games built into one video game. Like you're all these systems in their own way are video games built into one massive. What am I what am I missing? You're smiling and I'm laughing. <laughs> I'm screwing with the chat. <laughs> no, no. Uh, it's Adgrun again, and this is hilarious. And then you can finish your thought. Adgrun says, I don't want to hear King A tracks voiced by Bob from accounting. <laughs> Okay, that's funny. It, uh, what a good Bob point, has though, a good Jamie, voice. Right? Like, that's what I said. Bob's got those sultry tones. Maybe he's got those <laughs> low ends, man. You know, oh like, my yeah. God. I, I think Bob's, it makes that. Bob's sub 100 on the, on the old meter there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it makes sense for the, the studio to utilize AI right now. Definitely. And yeah, would that be great to have, you know, large, big time actors, especially have Kat in there, you know, just to hear her voice again in an MMO? Oh, who wouldn't love that, you know? But I really do think it makes sense from a financial standpoint and from a tech standpoint. Um, I love the fact they're using in in house vo vo uh, vocals from their dev team. I, I love it. Oh, yeah. that that is the part that I really like. Look, if you're going to go AI voice, okay. But the fact that you took these developers that probably would love nothing more than to just be, just have an Easter egg somewhere in the game that let them and their friends and family know that they were an important part of this thing. And then to give them the ability to be an AI voice. And there's there's enough of them that you won't hopefully run into the same voices over and over and over again. There have been games where that sort of happens and that kind of sucks. Skyrim, I think, was one of those ones where there's like five people that voiced all the things and you just kept running into them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But but the like, Do you know how long I've been looking for you? Yes. I yes. Know. I know. You and your clones are all over the place. <laughs> uh, I think that. I think that this is a real cool moment. I think that this is the kind of thing where it's a nice thing for the people in the studio that that sit behind a desk and grind out bugs all day long. Like they probably absolutely loved this. That's my guess. Yeah, yeah it memorializes them in this big, massive world that they've built. It's it's a beautiful thing. I think that's a, that was a great choice. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And, you know, like throughout so throughout this whole thing, this whole experience kind of shifting gears here a little bit. We got a lot of different a lot of lore drops, just small things. But it was just like adding that much more story to all the players. We already talked about the Heartwood cast. You mentioned the racial identifiers that every person will have when they come through the portal, you know, each race having their own um, their own take on that and their own tooltips and stuff on that, which is going to be cool. And then, you know, they dropped that the Veiloon will have an equivalent starting area of Lionhold called Samius Hope, which is very cool. You know, that's going to, I imagine, the Sand Squall. I'm just taking a shot in the dark. I imagine you start out there, which would be really cool. Um, and then you've got the, I'm just going to rapid fire these real quick, a couple more. you got the Court of Cloaks, which is a band of clandestine cutters and thieves, which that's fun. And then you have Captain Eudoxia, which I think uh, chat's going to see her in just a second here on the show or on the stream. But a lieutenant of the Seventh Lance, which is an element of the Kalar's army. So you got all these just like little nice little things, you know, along the way. And it, and when you combine that with Enan Zer's, uh, Com comp uh, composition that we got to actually hear, which is something else we probably should talk about, but my goodness, man, like it has added more depth to the game, I thought. Yeah, and I think that, um, you, you know, when you when you always talk about how you're driving around town and you're listening to these um, to these uh, showcases just from a sound perspective, I started doing that uh, a while back when you when you said just try you know try doing this and uh, this was one that I did I listened to it on my on my commute to work and um, I, I, there were times where I kind of wanted them to stop talking so that I could just hear more of the music but um, I, I have some stuff here on Einenzer um, and I hope I'm saying that correctly but um, 
I was blown away. And like you guys kind of heard a little bit before the show when I'm like, what? That too? Oh my gosh. And they're like, what are you even talking about? I said, don't worry about it. I'll talk about it on the show. Well, when you yelled, shut up. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> who is this guy? What is happening? <laughs> I don't know what's happening. So, so anyway, a little bit about Einan Zur. Um, this is a, uh, a composer who is helping bear like they're together they're they're composing the soundtrack for the game if it's probably already done but anyway so Einan Zur is an Emmy award winning Israeli American uh he's a composer for film TV video games now I'm gonna drop some video game names here that are gonna blow your mind but uh, just a little bit about him before he uh, before he came over to the United States he was actually an Israeli army in an elite armored unit, which I thought was awesome. I don't know. I, th I think every, I think all military think males have to serve, right? Over well, there. Gal Gadot was in the Israeli army too, wasn't she? I feel well, like she, she was. I, it, she's Israeli, right? Yeah. Uh, I think so. I think so. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm 90% sure she was in the army too. So there's like, there's... Yeah, there is, it's all, so Proctis is saying it's all citizens, which would make a yeah, lot of sense, go. right? Two it's, years. Yeah. They have to serve for two years. So Einanzer served for four. Anyway, and again, he was part of an elite armored unit, which I, I thought was pretty cool. Anyway, this is the part that I want to get to about Einanzer, the guy who's making the music with Bear McCrary for, for our game. So he composed soundtracks for 80 video games, including the following, and it's a long list. Dragon Age. Ooh. EverQuest, Fallout, Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 76. So all the yeah. Fallouts. All, pretty much all of them. Yep. Um, we've talked about this game before. SOCOM 2 U.S. Navy SEALs. Oh, did the music for that yes. game. Yes. <laughs> I was like, whoa. I don't remember the music from that game, but I'm sure it was awesome. Um, Jibs, you like this one. Twisted Metal. Oh, yeah. He did that one. Oh, yeah. Prince of Persia. Terra which is another uh, yeah. fallen MMO. Dra the original Dragon's Dogma, The Elder Scrolls Online. Okay, hi, that's a big one. Yep. The Elder Scrolls Blades, which also had excellent music. Star Trek, Starfield, Baldur's Gate 2, Icewind Dale 2, Lineage 2, Warhammer 40K, Crusader Kings. That one's for you, son. Oh, yeah. And a ton of like movie titles, but he also did the trailer, the music for the trailer for The Hobbit. Cool. That's <laughs> that is big, and that's probably a quarter of the things that I was able to find on his wiki. Yeah, holy is that smokes. nuts? He's an absolute titan. They both are. So the fact that <laughs> they got they got them both, Bear and Eden, is just ridiculous and the moment that you heard that composition start playing like the moment you heard that score like it was just i uh, sunny is his resume is his resume better than bears uh it's, he's, dude they're both they're pretty good yeah, i mean man. bear has a ton of so we actually have a video out on on bear mccrary we should probably do one for iron zero too yeah but Holy just cow. a total fatui right when you hear the music <laughs> for the first time fatui Still not, I'm still not quite getting I, it. I just hear Ratatouille <laughs> every time, man. Like, I'm never going to take that seriously. <laughs> so simple. I am. I am. But we'll hear that music, though. Like, it just felt like I looked at the game totally different. You know, it, it reminded me of the old school days. It's one of the first times I felt this way. Remember back when, before, when uh, Bioware was releasing updates once a week for Star Wars The Old Republic? And it was mm -hmm. every, I think it, they moved it to a Wednesday. So it became a, every, a Wednesday thing. You know, everyone's hyped up for this game. It's the first, you know, it's Star Wars Universe, blah, blah, blah. And then they did like the class. Do you guys remember those, the class previews? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you got to hear that music and you're just like, oh. Oh. You know, like. Those were so good. Yeah. Have you ever, have you looked at them recently? I did. <laughs> I loved it. Again, I watched the Sith Warrior one about, I think it was la a month and a half ago, actually. I remember the Jedi one, and I remember the biggest thing was that the lightsaber combat was going to be, I remember them selling it as cinematic. So when you would get, oh. you know, in combat, it was cinematic. Yeah. And then you Ooh. got out there, and you're just 
beating this poor animal to death with your green bat. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was young. Not as cinematic as I thought it might be. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely not. Hey, yeah, you could come too. Bring your green bat. We're going streaking. <laughs> Bring your wiffle bat. Bring the quad into the gymnasium. <laughs> it was, uh, uh, but you're not wrong. Like the the trailer and the way that they presented those things, the music makes such a difference. It is music is one of those things. And, and, you know, I don't have to tell you this JB or cash that like audio is, is really what binds the magic together. Um, it, it is one of those things where visuals, if you don't have good visuals, it's not going to work. Right. But if you do have good visuals, sometimes it doesn't work either. And uh, if you've ever watched YouTube videos where people take cuts from a movie that you know is one thing and put a completely different soundtrack to it, uh, like when they do like the romantic comedy stuff to like The Shining or something like that, the music changes everything. It's it it's, it's crucial yep. to get that kind of stuff right. And and so by hiring these just titans, absolute titans of the video game music industry. Uh, I, I don't know how you can do any better than that. And, and we're already seeing it in just the little tiny bits that we're getting. So it's it's a cool start to to be able to see that kind of stuff. It does remind me of the early days of like Bioware type of stuff where they were, you know, they couldn't really do any wrong at this point. So, right. Was, let's see what happens. Was there anything from this update you guys felt like that surprised you? Like when you walked away from this, was it anything that really like stood out to you the most? It was the tree. It was the tree for me. Like that was by far the biggest whoa moment was when they told me that, oh, by the way, here's a tree and it's tapped into the essence and it will form a network around like the world. I'm like, this is like this is the whole lore. Like, this is it. <laughs> this is what's connecting the universe. And you're just like dropping it on me at the end of a paragraph about like, I don't know, like jumping puzzles. Like is this is a way <laughs> bigger deal than they made it seem. So that was a that was a very, very big thing was that connection. Hmm. I think for me, there's two things. The first one I talked about already, and it was scale. Um, I think the scale of what they showed us, uh, the, the just the sheer size of what we were able to see, I truly believe is a precursor for what is to come with the size of this game. I think the game is massive. And by the time the game launches, the entire world is going to have scale like that. So I think that's a that's a big thing for me. The second thing for me was just stopping to smell the roses and looking at all of the visuals and the way that the characters moved and um, the way that, you know, the, the character would like almost fall down off of an edge or something and, and help himself up like those oh, that are. Was, that was a surprise, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a surprise. And and I, I love that that is in the game because it does add to the fluidity of how your character moves. And that equals more immersion. Anything that add, that adds more immersion to me is huge. But, you know, say what you will say about New World. New World is a beautiful game. It truly is. I'm not talking sound. I'm just talking the, the way the game looks. It is a beautiful game. And this reminded me very much of New World, which in itself has its own problems, obviously. But if you look at the game from a visual perspective, it is absolutely beautiful. And to have that resonate with me when I'm watching this showcase about New World or about <laughs> Ashes of Creation, a game that is going into, you know, the further stages of alpha is a, that's a high compliment for me. The game is just stunning. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. It looks great. It looks, uh, gosh, like it. Okay. So if this is polished, right. Or, you know, more polished than other zones. Doesn't that make you more excited for the other zones? Like the rest <laughs> of the game? Like if this is the world we get to sink our teeth into, and that's what I was thinking when I was listening to that music. I'm like, this is my world. This is where I'm going to be living. You're like, this is just fantastic. You talk about scale, you know, and they're watching it right now on stream. You know, the, the ruins of of um, of Alar, you know, or Ayla, I'm sorry. Like, it just, it it's just insane, you know, and, and that there's going to be so many, like, 
and the fact that it's a sand park and you kind of get like get to make your own way you know it's not necessarily okay you go here you go here okay you do five quests here you kill seven things here boom 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 like no it's like you yeah you'll do those things but it doesn't you don't have to do it in a certain way like it's just you make your own way you know you're just a dude you're not the dovahkeen you're just a dude and it's kind of cool to see that with all this polish so yeah i agree what do you think of the no there's sorry go ahead what do you think of the no fall damage thing though you think that's something that they'll fix I hope. I assumed that was just a him thing. Yeah, I hope there's fall damage. I like fall damage in my MMOs. Did I miss that? Is that like a thing? Because I knew he wasn't taking fall damage, but are you telling me that like that might not be a thing in this game? I don't know if they're going to fix that later. You can just eat yourself off that lion bridge and (laughs) all good. (laughs) I have seen Steven on some of these showcases make some, some dastardly jumps and miss or just jumping off the side of a cliff and like he lands and there's there's no fall damage so i'm hoping that that's something that that will be added because i gotta fix it yeah you you definitely gotta fix that for sure no that's crazy that's like almost as bad as the walking underwater oh my gosh you know get me started like you can't just fall off that bridge and be like well that's my shortcut like okay (laughs) lawn darts wouldn't work no no Lawn darts has to result in your death. I'm sorry. If you if you it's if you true. pull away from that, if you walk away from that thing, like you're you're not getting a prize. It's true. Sorry. <laughs> so <laughs> prize is only awarded on death. <laughs> death Sign required. Here. Sign here. That's right. <laughs> Look, right. it's right at the bottom of the contract. Uh, you didn't die. Get out of here. <laughs> Get out of here. All right, Sonny. So walk Incineration. Walk it off. <laughs> Incineration. <laughs> All right, so one out of ten, boys. Let's go around, one out of ten owls. Let's go around the bin here. Sonny, what'd you think? Oh, I'll give it an eight. Um, yeah. I'll give it. Um, I'll give it an eight. It was good. It had some moments that were just really, really good, and then it had some stuff that I'm like, okay, you know, I wish they would have seen a little bit more. Uh, I did. I did actually enjoy that they just kind of screwed around watching margaret and the other guy not be able to jump up that (laughs) bill trust right bill trust they just watched margaret and bill not jump up that thing and he just let him cook and (laughs) he kneeled just to watch i guess the story goes that they had a previous sort of take of this thing they did about half of it and then they had to scrap it and during that one steven couldn't make the jump and that (laughs) He got like super frustrated. I don't know. I can't remember where I heard this from, but it was sort of like that. And so now he's up on this ledge, just cackling at these poor two people. <laughs> Bill's just sweating. <laughs> you know, you can just imagine he's embarrassed. He's doing this thing, and his boss is just up there on a ledge, just watching him fail over and over and over. And every time he's like gets just a little bit worse at it. Uh, <laughs> See that one where he just like beam like sprints when he goes right off the stairs the other side yeah. it doesn't just even jump straight just, just, <laughs> just, <laughs> right he hits, he just hits his teeth on the other end <laughs> just, <laughs> just drops straight to death. yeah but uh all in all i mean i'll give it an eight uh i i think it yielded it was just kind of fun and it was good and it had some great moments to it it wasn't terribly like important like did i really need that update probably not I'm going to come out of that portal anyways. And just like you said, I'm going to go. Cool. (laughs) (laughs) I would have done that with or without the update. Right. Uh, So that's just kind of that. I'll give it an eight. Okay. Yeah, I think I think I'm going to I'm going to echo him. I think I'm going to go eight. Um, I I did like the we got we got a new term. We got Fatui out of it. (laughs) We got some some decent lore drops. Uh, We got to see the the starter area. I don't know how like how much of a spoiler it was to be able to see the starter area, but I sure I'm sure as hell happy I got to. You know what I mean? I think it's it's beautiful. Um, The scale, the music, like eh, everything in it, I, I think was really good. There was a lot of good points in there. But there were no like, oh my god, wow, wow moment moments to uh, to push it to a, a nine or a ten for me. But I mean, I mean, come on, we love every one of these things that come out. We have to, we have to rate them on some kind of a scale. So yeah, I'll give it an eight. I loved it though. Yeah, yeah, I'm the same boat with you guys. Eight as well. 
Um, the high point for me was definitely seeing the AI. That was way out of left field, something that we were not expecting, where we, we were anticipating, you know, reading the text, which we were stoked for. But this just kind of sweetens the deal even that much more for me. And so seeing that AI incorporated, at least in its rough state, its early state, you know, something I definitely look forward to. So, yeah, I say, uh, say definitely eight. And, uh, you know, boys... I think uh, we should go ahead and let the folks know we are going to be doing our next episode the night before Alpha 2. So Friday. Next Friday. If you're listening on release day, it's Friday. This upcoming Friday. Sonny, you, you gave the calendar. You I'm got those furrowed eyebrows. Right now. <laughs> I'm panicking. Yeah. Com- coming from the same guy that wanted us to record on Halloween night. Yeah. What the well, heck, look, man? What's wrong with I you? I forgot what was on the 31st of October. Yeah. All right. Have you any idea how hard it is to make this calendar work between are, the three of us? Are we sure it's next week? Yeah. Uh, it's the 25th, bro. Nope. It is the... The day <laughs> is two the weeks, nine. Friend. Yep. <laughs> we are recording next Friday, but See? Ashes isn't coming out the next day. <laughs> oh, it's not? Nope. Ashes comes out on the 25th. Well, shoot. Well, I guess us and uh, all our guild members, we're going to be jumping into New World, so we'll have plenty of time to... Sink our teeth in the new version of that, 3.0. <laughs> That's less exciting than you telling me that Alpha 2 is going to be here a week early. <laughs> oh. But, but yeah, I'll yeah. see you in game. Sorry. You, yeah, you guys will see each other in game. <laughs> I will not. I won't be there. Proc- That's going to be brutal for me. Oh, yeah. Proc T yeah. says, uh, this is why Jibs isn't capital. <laughs> That's fair. Not yeah, bad. just yeah, just add another zero. It'll be fine. Yeah, it's fine. It'll, fine. It'll, well, well, isn't rounding a thing? Round. <laughs> Get this guy out of my <laughs> bank. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. This was Lore Force, the podcast for Ashes of Creation. If you enjoyed it, let us know how we're doing. Leave us a review on whatever podcast app you're using, or comment in the YouTube comment section below. You can always call us 516-875-1776. Takes you straight to our voicemail. So you can call and we will play your voicemail for our mailbag segment. We'd love to bring that back, but we got to get some mail first. So you can always call us there. And then, of course, you can always email us lowerforgedhq at gmail.com. Sonny. You can go to our website slash link tree, and that's loreforge.com to find all the links to the links, including the YouTube link. And that is youtube.com slash at loreforge, where you can find excellent things such as the Varen Chef and the history of tanks and rogues. JB came up yeah. with some some very good Gosh. stuff on that. Um, those are those are super cool. So that is uh, available on our YouTube. You can also follow us on Twitch if you are fortunate enough to catch us. We do record the show that you're listening to right now live on Twitch, uh, and that is at Twitch.tv/LoreForgedHQ. Also, uh, I've been playing a lot of games, but we are getting awfully close to me playing. Ashes of Creation on the Twitch stream, which will really be something. Uh, And then finally, Patreon. You can get all of our content early and the State of the Owl special Patreon episodes, as well as the Happy Hour channel. And that is at patreon.com slash loreforged HQ cash. I think uh, I think we're all going to be streaming Ashes and probably together except for the first probably except for the first day for the first day i'm gonna want everybody to shut up (laughs) (laughs) give me my moment but yeah i think we're 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 definitely gonna be hopping in there uh all of us to be uh to be streaming some ashes i don't want any texts from you guys i don't want to hear it (laughs) yeah that's not gonna be a thing i can't i'm gonna i'm gonna delete you from my phone because i do not need to get 180 texts while I'm trying to do my thing because I want to be playing Ashes too, but I can't at that time. Mm. We will probably send you a massive flood of screenshots. You're going to be deleted. <laughs> You're going to be blocked. You love me. Blocked! You know it. 
Friends, you can follow us on X at Loreforged HQ. You can follow us on Instagram at the same Loreforged HQ. We have a bunch of new members in Discord and Guild members too. Lots of people joining our guild right now. So we would like to give a very hearty, warm welcome to Zakul, Trekker, Jamba, Laughables, Otto, Madoka, Vindrak, Seatoon, Linksern, Xlorntabus, <laughs> Ugly, Good one. <laughs> Ug Lee, The Godless Assassin, Nightso, Thorgast, Mirabel, HN78, and Icarus. Welcome to the Lore Forged family. Happy Hoo! Friends, while there, I thought they were just like mixing around consonants just to screw with you. <laughs> oh, yeah. They, they, they might be. They might be. It's okay. I nailed them though. Friends, thank you so much for tuning in. You all have a wonderful week, and we will see you right back here next Friday. It no longer has that umph because Alpha 2 is not there the next day. But anyway, you can come <laughs> join the live show. Have some fun. We love you. Take care. <laughs> Peace, love, and honeybees. Safe travels, adventures. <laughs> <laughs>